progress. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Hey, I'm so busy. Hey, I'm so busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Running behind myself. I'm here. Give me one second. Now. Okay. Thank you all for Logan Owen. I got my whole little like studio ambiance that I'm working on right now. So I'm like super happy. I got my cute little royalty chair. <laughs> so yeah, we saw. yeah, like I I'm I got this whole like studio vibe thing I'm setting up in my room. So <laughs> as y'all can see we have already got started having fun this is tiffany from the private room um tonight we are going to be talking about raising daughters raising daughters we have some fathers on here who i particularly wanted to dedicate this night tonight was fathers raising daughters but then we have some moms in here we're going to kind of give our little feedback and our little advice as a girl mom um so Thank you for joining us. We have um, special guest, celebrity guest, Nuff Said's daughter, Miss Jessica. And then we have Nuff Said, who's going to be joining us really, really soon. Um, so I'm really excited to be working with him and seeing his handsome face again. Um, we also have Mr. Dwayne Jones, um, Mr. Titus, big head person over there with the faux eyes. Um, <laughs> uh, we have... Monroe, with us, and then we have Miss Queen Shonda. Look at Pat. Look at Pat coming on here posing. <laughs> he came on here like he was about to run, be on the runway. So um, I know that Dwayne is a is a uh, is a girl dad. I know Pat is, and Titus, you said you had all girls, right? All girls. Oh, po po po, po man, po oh, man. I. I I couldn't make a boy if he came with directions. <laughs> See, he done started already, y'all. He done started <laughs> already. So, Jessica, we have two comedians on tonight. We have your dad, who gets paid to tell jokes. And then we have Titus, who just likes to give out free jokes. <laughs> I don't like to give them out. I mean, it's just, I'm going to get paid. I need to, I need to hook up. He, he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He is our Tiny. resident. He's our resident comedian. He keeps us laughing. <laughs> he goes. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. Um, we have somebody who is trying to join us. He's also a girl dad. So hopefully he'll be able to join us real soon. So real quickly, um, we already had uh, Dwayne was on last time. Titus Monroe. Um, Shonda, this is your first time, right? Have you been yeah. on before? It's your first time. Okay. I missed so, it last time. Okay. All right. So we got to do introductions. We got to make sure that you know who is on our single parents corner um, because I, I'm a firm believer that you can't really listen to people take, take advice and suggestions if you don't even know who they are. So I um, wanted to make sure that you know who is on our panel tonight. These are my experts. So all single parents on here tonight, um, either they are single, 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 which we talked about last last week, I think we were trying to figure make get the definition of single and all that kind of stuff together because you know people people have different versions of what's single, what's dating, what's married, sure. all that all that good stuff. So uh, if y'all missed that little uh, mm, 
I don't want to say it was a debate. It was, it was a good conversation. You have to check out uh, last month's Parent Corner. So we're going to go and we're going to start with the queen first. And she, this is her first time on the Single Parents Corner. So Miss Queen, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are and tell everybody about your business. Okay. Good evening, everyone on the panel and out there in Facebook land. <clears throat> I am Kashonda, known as Queens Rising, also aka the lady with the red locks. Um, <laughs> I'm a mother of six. I have wow. three daughters and I have three sons. Um, <clears throat> my oldest is 23. My youngest is nine. And I have a four-year-old granddaughter, so put me in the count for four girls. <laughs> I am an author. I have published two children's coloring books and a woman's guide as well. I'm currently in the process of launching my own coffee line in the hopes of one day have, not one day, it will be. <laughs> yes, yes, it will be. <laughs> in my bookstore. <laughs> right. So um, those are this, and I have a few other irons in the fire. So that's me. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So you said you're the mom of how many girls? Three. Three girls. Plus you have a grandbaby. Plus a granddaughter. Granddaughter. Okay. So you have four. All right. All right. So um, you're single. Are you, let's, let's go ahead and get that out. Cause you know, like I said, we, we want to know who's on the panel. So are you single, single or are you? <laughs> Well, I, I'm I'm single, single. Okay. But I don't. I I actually don't refer to myself as a single mother because I have a village behind me. Mm. So, um, I'm a single woman. But okay. I have a village helping me raise my. I like group, that. Even though half of them are grown. I like that, and now you got us. So I like it. <clears throat> I like it. You don't you don't consider yourself a single mom because you have a village behind you. I love that. That's a great thing because not not every mom has that. I do feel You're that right. I to have had that, you know, when the twins, I mean, imagine being a single mom with twins. Mm. So I feel it, I had Irish twins. So yes, I remember you told me that. <laughs> and for everybody who has no idea what that means. So that doesn't mean that you that your 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 baby daddy's Irish. That don't that don't mean that. That what does it mean? Tell everybody what that means. I, my babies are actually 11 months and three weeks apart <laughs> yeah. my oldest two so you so ain't actually the same age for three weeks <laughs> okay so you ain't take that six weeks six week nine she ain't waste no time, time. <laughs> she, she you ain't waste no time yeah. now nah, my yeah, husband yeah, no was like nah. now. <laughs> with it oh. yes yes so she was just like you know what baby out let's do this let's do this let's do it again all right all right cool all right so you are um uh you call it you are a queen and you are also part of the alter ego project that we are doing that empowers women to live their authentic selves um be who you are show your business side show your sexy side you know show show all of you in one yes. view so we we the ladies of the alter ego project um, we all are business owners, um, but me personally, looking at all y'all, we're all sexy and we're all beautiful. And we all have certain things about us that some people might see as taboo or too much as a mom or too much as a business owner. Um, some people might say that we are just, you know, born for the likes. It's not even like that. It's not. So for me, I am Tiffany, you know, people out at my job, everybody knows me by Tiffany. If you know me personally, you know me by Tiffany, but my alter ego is sunshine. And that's because when I'm at events and I'm hosting, um, when I am doing my boudoir shoots for my lingerie boutique, um, when I'm posting my photos from my from my uh boudoir shoots you know you can't put those on tiffany's page but i put them on my sunshine page you know out of respect for my family that don't need to see my my my, my, my butt cheeks. so i'm a business owner but i'm also an advocate so i'm a domestic violence sexual assault advocate um i'm an author um i'm a coach and all that so just because i have a lingerie 
like I post pictures in lingerie and in, in lingerie, which sometimes yes, but, cool. but I'm also a business owner, advocate. I'm also a survivor. I'm also an author. So I want you to always see me for the whole person, all of me. And so that's what we at, with the Alter Ego Project is that we share with women that join us, um, become members, partners, sponsors, models, coaches. We have various different ways for you to be part. Um, you get all kinds of ways to networking. You get to share your services and your brand with professional women. You can go on girls trips with us. Um, you can share your expertise in workshops and trainings. Um, just like it, it's it's for the the now woman, the modern woman, the woman who's not ashamed to be who she is at all times. So I don't have to hide in the corner for someone to like Tiffany, or I, like both of us, because we are one person. So Shonda, real quick, what is your alter ego, and kind of explain what your sides are. I don't mean to be funny, but uh -oh. I'm gonna need you to repeat that because somebody's background noise is really loud. Okay, so if you're not speaking, can y'all go on um, mute? Girl, did you not hear nothing? I just said I heard most of what you just said. <laughs> I was gonna say that was a lot. Okay. So tell everybody, because you're a partner of the Alter Ego. No, I just project. basically the last sentence you said, tell everybody yeah. what? So tell them I about. I think it's Titus, though. I, I really think it's him. Okay. Titus, if you're not on, you go on mute, please. You got a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, I closed the door. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I still need you to go on mute, though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so yeah, so Shonda, we're gonna learn about Shonda, and we're gonna learn about um. Oh, what is your alter ego name? I can't remember. Is it Queen? No, <clears throat> I didn't decide yet. No way. Yes, you did, girl. Because I, did. I, got it, I got it in. I got it on something. So I'm gonna find it while you're sitting here trying to say that you don't know what Taurus is. So tell us, describe both sides of you. I don't feel like I have an alter ego. I feel like I'm me all day, every day. And you yes. get what you get. And you yes, I like get or you don't. And I'm too much yes. for some people and I'm not enough for a lot others. So um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a Leo. So I am loyal. Um, I'm caring. I'm nurturing. I'm strong-willed. I'm stubborn. I'm not afraid to admit that. Mm -hmm. I have definitely spent a few years in therapy, much needed. Um, a domestic survivor, a sexual assault survivor. Um, so I'm not afraid to tell my story. I'm not afraid to be me. I'm, I've, I've accomplished a lot. I've lived through a lot. I'm not done yet. So yeah, that's why, it's, like I say, it's really hard for me to say who my alter ego is because it's just like, I am who I am. Either you right. Know. You do know that I'm still looking for your alter ego name. I know <laughs> I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. So some people that know you professionally, like they like they've never gone out. They're not your friends. So they've never gone out with you. They've never come to your house. They don't know your last name, so forth and so on. So they might see another side of you because girl, I'll be seeing you in them sexy dresses. And I know you're not wearing those when you're going to go talk about domestic violence okay so no, and i have one sweatshirt in the, you know right now this is you right. know so uh, when you're in those sexy dresses you're going out to the club or whatever that's you you can take off your professional hat and your business hat who are you the same as i am in these sweatshirt <laughs> 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 no, this is good because some people might give different answers. And so this is why, it's important. <laughs> I, is why I don't really change who I am. Like, right. um, I know we on Facebook live, but I'm going to say this, like, I don't, I don't wear undergarments. And so, um, whether it's sweatpants and a t-shirt or whether it's a sexy dress. I mean, and some people I've had men say, well, oh, well, if you was going out with me, you would have to put on you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, unmute enough said daughter, because I want to know what you said. 
yeah, yeah. You can uh, you can unmute. Go ahead if you want to. If you're contributing to the conversation, y'all y'all can come off mute. It's just if you're not saying anything, it cuts down on background noise. I did want to kind of piggyback on that because I know the feeling of. I don't take off hats when I enter a room. I am that. I am a mix of all of my emotions. I'm the mix of the person who doesn't feel like talking sometimes. And I kind of want to do a segue really quickly because I'm dealing with that currently where I am an extrovert. So I thought by nature, if you guys know my dad, you know, it just oozes out of us to we're in Walmart and we make connections. Like we're just checking out with two items. Why are we in here for three hours? We just naturally have the capacity, even though we just got off an eight hour shift to still hold those kind of relations with random people. And so when I get around people who've known me for a long time and they're just used to that, and people literally invite me out because I am the zhuzh of the party, but there's moments where I want to be that other hat where I'm just like, I'm chilling. Like I'm in the background. Mm. I don't want to have to cut up. I don't want to have to be the morale for everybody to stay up and in the moment. Like, and it's so much pressure to be that catalyst of the energy like don't get me wrong I can do it and I can be it but right 25 8 are you nuts yeah <laughs> you need that so when you were saying I were all of them at the same time girl I am that and yeah. I think when you are like me I'm 25 and as I'm going through the changes me too I am officially now a DV survivor and a lot of other things that I didn't know were labels that I'd be putting on myself but life is lifing right now. And I so resonate with that piece right there. I'm all of those things. I do still have an alter ego though. Let's be clear. But <laughs> I am um, okay, okay. all at once. Yeah. 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 So, so you understand that. And I think even though, you know, Shauna's like, I'm just me all the time and, you know, take it or leave it, blah, blah, blah. There still is if I was asked someone else that knows Shonda, I'm sure 10 people that know Shonda are going to be able to sh- tell me what her different sides are because they're seeing it from the outside. I'm so it's quiet. She I'm, might I'm, be. I'm naturally shy. If it's, I'm all about energy and I read rooms. And if the energy isn't right in the room, then I'm really to myself. Mm-hmm. But just like, um, if the energy is right, then I'm just me. I, I just me. Right. But what I was trying to say is that someone that's not Shonda might, will most likely be able to say, oh yeah, well here, when she's in this place, she's this place, but when she's here and she's in this place, you know, Ooh, you know, there's, I bet you, I can ask 10 people that know you and they're going to be able to identify the two different sides of you that, and it's okay for you to say, I'm me all the time, but I bet you, cause I can pick 10 people that can tell you both sides of me. And I'm sure um, Jessica can too. So I don't even like ten people. Do you? You don't like ten people? It's nothing wrong with ten people. <laughs> That's not. It, and these are friends. So these are people we're gonna ask that know no, you. I definitely don't friends. have ten friends. Oh, stop it! <laughs> I, can, I can honestly say, depending on the room that I'm in, you are gonna get a different side of me for sure. Without All a doubt, and have like a she different said. Side energies is the same way for the most part if I'm stepping out I like to step out by myself to be clear when I'm stepping out I am already in my alter ego mode I am Carmen on the weekends and there's nothing you can do about it I am that okay we're about to recruit her her. that's all I got for you like there is no Jessica that is Monday through Friday nine to five correctly after that it's Carmen and my dad knows it like he knows like me and my dad are like the you'll see when he gets on here we can talk about our dynamic but he knows after five o'clock on Friday just because the window I see her on Sunday and that's just that and I honestly I I resonate a lot with you queen on just how you feel or how I don't have 10 friends either I have one good friend and that is it um since my (laughs) TV situation and having to come back home only have one person that I've kept up with all these years and um that's all I'm rocking with right now and I can honestly say me being multifaceted with my personalities I'm still tapping into things like I said I now have this new label that I'm wearing and because of that my discernment is on a different scale so I Mm -hmm. personally don't have the luxury of being on 10 everywhere I go now it's like what you want from you you know (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I love that. Are you a mom, Jessica? You saw my face. I have a fur baby that I love. I okay. Into your mom. 
<laughs> aside from that, um, I was actually, I was married. I'm still married. I'll be um, divorced in June. Okay. Um, I was thinking of having a child um, prior to that because I was sexually assaulted. Um, I never had, I wouldn't even say it was an ignorance to being a mom as far as why I didn't want to, because I was given the opportunity to get what I'm saying, but it just was not for me. I know what I struggled with as a child. I see what current moms are still struggling with as a child. Like, did I live enough life yet? I got to put my life on hold. Am I enough? Will my child like me? Will my child love me? Will they understand the sacrifices that I made? Exactly. That's a conversation that is too real for me. And right. I don't need my kid when they're able to actually make a sentence say, mom, I was not happy or mom, you didn't even see me but I don't, I can't do it. So I did want children when I thought I would be in a household and we would be able to have like a cohesive child um, parenthood for my children and things like that. But when I realized that I had to remove myself from that situation, I just had to keep thanking God that I didn't allow myself to be a mom to someone that would not have two parents in that household. And my dad, again, will get on here and speak about how we were raised with both of our parents in the household for about 10 years. And then when they got a divorce, I can see it now as a 25 year old, the kind of damage it brought. But then I was like, oh, turn up. Why y'all tripping? Like y'all was sad every day. We good now. Y'all happy, right? That's right. what I thought, you know, things right. were gonna be at peace, but, right. hmm. but yeah, I'll save that. For, he's actually coming in now. So I know there'll be more things to dive into but yeah nice nice well I'm gonna be reaching out to you Jessica make sure that you send me um a message because um I I think you would be perfect for the alter ego project um and would love to have you on with us where do you live you can just give me the, the state I'm Charlotte North Carolina okay so you live in Charlotte okay good mm -hmm. you're local so a lot most of our stuff is based here even though we're branching out so I'm gonna reach out to you because I think you would be perfect for it and I know um Neff said is familiar with with all the things that I do so he can tell you you're in good hands <laughs> so um hey Nav, how are you what's good man I'm doing as good as you look how are you I'm doing good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good, to see, good to see everybody. Good to see everybody, everybody, everybody. What up? We were um, doing introductions and we were talking about the Alter Ego Project, which is a women empowerment network that I started back in January that is growing and rapidly just moving across the U.S. right now, um, which I'm super, super proud of. So um, we were talking to Shonda. She was introducing herself. Your daughter, Miss Jessica, she started introducing herself. And we're talking tonight to fathers of daughters. Um, and then us moms who are going to kind of chime in and give our little motherly girl mom uh, feedback and advice too. Okay. So, uh, no, you are a father of how many kids? I have three boys and three girls, all by the same woman. First relationship. Ain't none of that baby mama drama. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice yeah but i, I, I have uh and i've got kids but yeah i love being a parent love being a dad um it's like well, growing up i always wanted to be a husband father and a friend so i suck at being a husband but i'm pretty damn good at being a father and a friend so i kind of <laughs> say that no that's the truth i swear to god i'm good i got i got i got i, got, I, I have references <laughs> okay Okay. All right. Well, that, that's, that's, another, that's another, that's another topic. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So you're a girl dad and can you tell me like the order of the children, like ages and who they are? Yeah. Like big, big boy, big boy. So, um, well, the boys are older The 30, okay. 27, 26, um, is, a was my daughter and okay. then 27, 25 and then we have the 20 um 27 25 26 so there's stair steps and then uh from there the baby girl is 20 so all of my girls are the younger ones so the okay. baby girl is 20 and then 24 and then here's 25 so nice. that's i was gonna say queen i'm an irish twin as well me and my sister were, 11 months apart yeah so we'll be the same age for two weeks and then yeah so. yeah wow. so this boy is seven months, 11 days, seven pounds, 11 ounces, seven, seven minutes after 11 o'clock. So it's pretty good. Wow. <laughs> so Shanda was sharing that she has um, Iris twins as well, but I, ha I had her explain what that meant for those in the back who don't know, who didn't know what that is. So we doing a little education tonight too. So, <laughs> well, we're all about education, but we had a nice little lesson there for a few minutes talking about Iris twins. Okay. So three girls, three boys, you had all the boys first. Right. That was a good setup. So that means that the girls, they got protection all day, every day. 
Who did it? God <laughs> did it. Who did it? God did it. Already. <laughs> that's All right. Show. Yeah, that's real. Nice. So tell everybody what you do and why you're our celebrity guest tonight. <laughs> Oh, well, I didn't know I was our celebrity guest, but God, good. God you is good, are. man. You are. I, so um, when we have special guests that that you automatically is a celebrity on here. So yeah, tell, tell everybody what you do um, and tell us about your family dynamics. Uh, salute. Okay, well, I am, enough said, the ultimate host, and that's what I do. I host, <laughs> I host comedy shows. I host senior citizen events. I host um, wedding receptions. I host divorce parties. I host uh, bar mitzvahs, Jewish weddings. Wait, uh, wait, wait, of everything, huh? wait, 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 wait. Did you say divorce parties? <laughs> yeah, I host divorce parties. Those are some of the biggest parties. Yeah, they're really okay. Because I didn't want to interrupt, but <laughs> I did me. catch. Right. Okay. I'm. I'm sorry yeah. for stopping you. He does so much stuff, y'all. But I'm sorry. I, yeah. I have to get the moment with the moment. Okay. So. Yeah, so. Tell, tell me more about the. We're all single, so a couple of us have been divorced. So tell us about this divorce party that we done missed out on. Well, the divorce party is just that. You know, you celebrate everyone for whatever reason. We always want to be with people, and I get a lot of people is like the pegs, you know, the squares and circles and all so whatever. But the the thing that I find is. The one thing, the hardest thing is to be single. Single means whole and complete. So with that, we get into relationships and we kind of, you know, other things happen and we try to force it. We try to make things work and they just don't, don't for whatever reason. So at the end of the day, you still have to celebrate you. You still have to celebrate mental health. You still have to celebrate the fact that you have choices. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's the one, my favorite thing about life is having choices. You know what I'm saying? Like having, if I was in a situation where I didn't have any choices, Mm -hmm. I don't know how I would make it, but just the fact that I have choices. And for me, in any situation, when I leave a situation, whether it's a business, whether it's a relationship or what have you, I, as long as I get to take me with me when I leave, I'm going to be all right. You know, so that's just that's kind of like my mental towards, you know, anything. So I work for Red Ventures, you know, back what eight years ago now, seven, eight years ago, whatever. When they fired me, I never wanted to feel that again in my life. Like, you know, to hell with this. So, no, I said, fuck this. That's what I said. But I mean, that's literally where I had what where it took me because I did not want to ever allow anyone to have the control to fire or terminate me from a job anymore. So the same thing applies to relationship. You know, men choose who they want to marry, women choose who they're gonna have sex with. So we got choices to make here, you know what I'm saying? Choose wisely is the thing I would say. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's just that's where it is. So that's what the divorce parties are about, or that's what they consist of. It's just literally um, friends, your closest, your dope friends, hopefully not one that slept with your spouse, um, yeah. is connected and mm -hmm. partying with you, you know, and they're <laughs> celebrating you and the life and the legacy as we move forward. So that's what the divorce party consists of. I, I had to catch myself on that one. So anyway, so um, <laughs> all right, so got it. Um, yeah, I has anybody on here ever heard of the divorce party or had one? And Dwayne, you're you're a photographer. So have you ever been a photographer at one? Uh, I have. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't personally think it's something that should be celebrated. If you want to celebrate yourself or your freedom or whatever, but celebrating the end of something that you said was going to be forever, it's just not nothing. Yeah. I want to be like, ooh. Yeah, I feel that way too. Maybe a coming back to me party, but necessarily a divorce party. I don't think that that's something that I could do. That's a lot for of lies. Me, that, for yeah. me, because I am about to be divorced, as I previously discussed, I obviously disagree respectfully, of course. No, but no. I just, yeah. For me, when I tell y'all, June can, cannot come fast enough. <laughs> like, it depends on what you dealt with and right. how much of that relationship not only took from you, but you got yeah. to see how little you valued yourself. Mm. When I, I took yeah. more in that relationship I've ever taken in life. And I was only with that person for five years. Okay? I understand that. I've been with this body for 25 now. And I was willing to walk away from everything that this man instilled in me, this way the man taught me how to love, how to, all of that went out the window for one being that I met at a club one night. So when I tell you it is celebratory depending on what transpired mm -hmm. to yes. know, and mind you, I didn't wait for her to say I want a divorce. I chose me. So right. on June, you best believe I'm turning up. Not only I got to walk away because 
I, like I said, DD, I wasn't even supposed to be here talking with you guys today. So I'm celebrating for everything. So it truly is definitely subjective, obviously, yeah. You know, yeah. depending on what it is. But for yeah. me, hooping and hollering. With yeah. bells and whistles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that perspective. I'm a domestic violence survivor. Um, I'm an infidelity survivor or trying to heal from infidelity um, survivor. So that comes with its own traumas as well. Um, and yeah, I feel like I completely lost myself in my marriage because I accepted a lot of things that I normally wouldn't have and tried different things that you know I, I forgave just too many times. I guess that's the best. That's that's the short of it. I forgave too many times and each forgiveness I lost a part of myself you know what I mean so I totally totally get it I totally get it so in that respect yes I totally agree this is a safe place you can say whatever you want you don't have to worry about judgment from anybody on this panel and heck to anybody else who says anything otherwise so um so yeah I get that and I respect that um I think just think for me I don't think for me I would say it's a divorce party it would be like you know, something that's more focused on me as an individual, you know what I mean? Um, but I get saying, oh, this is a divorce party, like that nigga, I'm done. I get it. I totally get it. And it's all about, you know, your journey and, and what you want your journey to be. I totally get it. I totally get it. And I don't want it to be said that I'm going to be there, like, kind of, like, in that F then, like, F nigga free, like, it's not going to be that. It yeah. is going to be a divorce party because it is what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat yeah. it or water it down because this is a memory that I have to stick with. I got yeah. married for her. None of my family was there, you know, and I did that because I wanted to. So there was a lot that I was giving up to say I do, and I did. Yeah. And I yeah. would have still been doing honestly to God, I would have still been I doing to this day, but it came to a point where it literally, there would be times where I'm about to go to sleep and something erupts in my body where I can't even stay beside them. And I have to get up and go sleep yeah. on the couch. Like I did something just yeah. because I could, I was so restless. So for me, this is going to be yes. Divorce party. Why? Because yes. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it out. I'm yeah. separating from that, you, the mem all of that, the trunk, all of it. So I can I identify gonna... with that. I had to have me one time. I was on the couch and I had something rumbling in me. Taco yeah. Bell. Tear you up every time. Oh I my God. Beans, them refried beans, yeah. ooh, with the fire sauce. Every time, it just blows the back of a toilet off. <laughs> oh. I did feel that way. I felt <sighs> just like that. Not oh story. my God. No. Okay. You have three girls, three boys. We're not going to ignore the boys. But we're talking yeah, about Edward, Tyrese, and I just got another phone with Tyrese too. Edward, Tyrese, and Cedric Jr. or the second. Yeah. I've, I, I know that I've met two of your daughters, and I think one of your sons. I don't think I've, yeah, I think two daughters, one son. Yeah. Your daughter that had the twins. Oh, yeah, my grandboys. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Desiree's. Uh, just retired out of the Navy, and she oh, just girl. got accepted into nursing school. Go, so girl. we're super excited about that. She's, she got accepted to one of the toughest uh, nursing schools in Jacksonville. So Good we're for super her. Excited. How are the twins? Yeah. And the twins are doing phenomenal. Cairo and Carter yeah. are phenomenal. The, yeah. And then uh, this weekend, well, actually the 15th, is going to be Christian's birthday. So Christian is what? Two now, right? Mm -hmm. So Christian just turned two. We celebrated okay. his birthday when we were in Florida um, this weekend. Oh. Had a great time, a great reunion with uh, with all the girls there. And nice. um, then from there, um, Christian turns two, and Cairo and Carter, they'll be one in December. They're born December the 30th, one day after my birthday. So yes. we talk about being a girl dad for your, her, for my daughter to be able to call me and tell me that I'm having twins, and dad, I'm a, they're going to be born like in Capricorn season. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And they came, like I said, literally the next day after my birthday. It was just, it's just a phenomenal nice. thing. And it, it was phenomenal in a lot of ways. You're talking about, uh, we're talking about um, being, you know, single parents here. Uh, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm a firm believer and I raised my kids that thunder and lightning never made anything grow. So I never cursed at them like that. I never had to. I never, uh, I was never the iron fist parent. You know, I could talk to them. I communicate with them with phone whooping that butt. I let them know what it is. They understood that. There was no, you know, and I never disciplined my kids out of anger. Like that was never my thing. I never 
Just yeah. I was so mad with you out. I, I, I never got that. I never got that. So I think I think that comes with individuals that literally uh, have poor self control. You know, poor temperance. And I just thank God that that just wasn't my case. And I wasn't raised that way. My mom and dad are still together, and I I have temperance. So I don't have. I never had to curse my kids or to get. And I have problems with people that curse. And that went from the basketball court, football, or whatever else. If they're still in school, you ain't cursing my kids. You curse the rest of these kids. And I, right. I'm not. I want to hear we're preparing them for the real world. No, 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 we're not going to do that because see, I believe profanity is a weak mind attempt at conversation. So I'm going to need you to get your mind right when you're talking to my children. So that's how I communicate with them as well. So when they get older, they start cousins. They cousins like sailors now. I mean, and dad, <laughs> sailors, you know, so it's all good. But the, the point is, I believe that that type of parenting is what's so needed. And shout out to the single moms that are doing it. And again, shout out to the single dads that are doing it. Like hard body. My man, Corey, uh, Corey is a musician. He's a keyboardist. And Corey, I was his last name, but Corey is a single single dad. And I just, his um, timeline came up. I, I caught him in a, in a shop. He was shopping or whatever. And I caught a picture of him with the baby uh, locked in on the front of him and the straps and everything, you know. And oh. I, just, I, I just commended him, you know, for that as a guy. We do these things. And then some men in our mind, we think, well, of course, other women or a woman will see this and say, oh, he takes care of his kid. But I believe the, the the mental, the core of the man, it goes past that to say, I'm cultivating my child and being there as a as a present parent, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to a check. And in addition to that, when this child grows up, hence the exhibit A, you'll have someone that can come back and, and love on you, someone that can come back and give you those dividends that you invested. Because I'm going to tell you, I've, I've been in a very dark place here in the past few months of my life. And my daughter, when she moved down, it really, it literally like that ray of, of sunshine, that, that hope, you know, that's what she's been for me. And I know I speak for other dads in the same when you love on your kids. And speaking of which, I love the fact that I appreciate the fact that I, as a man, can say I loved on my daughter without ever violating her. And our daughters are the first, we are, we're their first love interest, That's period. True. You know, that don't change, period. This is your first love. So how you handle her, how you talk to her, how you resolve problems with her, how she can talk to you, that's setting her up for the men that she'll end up pursuing in life or who she'll entertain in life. So right. I, I'm, 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 I, I just, I know there are men that have made crazy mistakes and I'm not judging any man. I'm just simply um, stating an obvious fact that when you cultivate and you love on uh, your daughter the proper way, and you teach how teach her how I can make love to you without touching you by respecting you and by having a standard or showing you what a standard is, then that's, that makes a night and day difference in everything with relationships. And again, it's just a blessing to me to be able to be as a grown man and I can look my daughters in their face and know I've never had any type of inappropriate contact or any type of thing like that. And that's, that, there's a value in that because so many women can't say that. So many women felt like their fathers didn't protect them as they were growing up. And maybe he didn't do it, but he knew who did, or he 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 stood idly by, stuff like that. So there's so many different forms of abuse, man. But I just I just thank God that in the areas that I needed to get it right in those regards, I did. Now I'm 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 gonna work this job and I'm gonna quit this job and I'm gonna go find another job. Might be out two weeks, but I'm gonna find another job. Maybe out three months, but I'm gonna find another job. That was my thing. Like I'm gonna quit a job in a minute, but we right. always have money, we'd always make it. But when it right. comes down to just being a father or being there, I like to think that I was present and my kids and like I said, our relationship before we have today's evidence. Of that, so. Yes, I, I love that. I love all of that. Um, I can tell how much your um, how great your relationship are with your kids because between Miss Jessica and please tell me your other daughter's name again. The one I met. Um, Detrice, Detrice Desiree's. You met Desiree's. 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 Okay. Desiree's, so yeah. Desiree's. Des okay. So I've met both of them and both of them are like all gushy when it comes to you. So yeah. that shows that you, that they love you. You love them and you've done something right. Cause wow. you know, not too many, not too many people, not, and I hate to say this, but there's so many people, especially in the black community who can't say that they have that relationship with their fathers, That's especially true. girls. And it's a, it makes a big difference in a girl's life, in a woman's life, when she has a positive male influence in her life. That's all children, but Absolutely. it's girls. Um, 
So I'm glad that you were able to be that for your girls. And it's evident. I, I can tell in Jessica, like when you, she was letting us know that you were coming, it was all smiles. She was, you know, giddy, like she was looking forward to it. Um, and Desiree's, I know she was, loves you. She couldn't keep her hands off you. She was hugging you yeah. all night. <laughs> so um, I can tell your girls love you. And that, that mm -hmm. says a lot about you as a, as a father. Um, Pat, you are, um, dad you have a girl and Dwayne you have girls tell me your family dynamics so I know Dwayne you have three kids one is a girl am I right right yes yeah, so I have my daughter is the oldest and then I have two sons so two different nice. two different moms but yeah okay nice um I remember when I met you when you came here to Charlotte for a photo shoot we talked about you being um, a girl dad and some of the things, some of the standards that you had for her. And I, I want to get into that if it's not too personal. I, I'll try not to be too personal, but I don't think, I think what I say, you'll, you'll be okay with. Um, but you said something particular about um, you, uh, um, when it came to her grades, you had certain standards for her. So she had to get, I believe it was nothing less than a B. Do I remember that correct? Absolutely. Right. And you put that- It was in Ohio. It was, man, we talked about it because it was funny because it's an Ohio B. Because this okay. Southern, okay. Southern stuff was a little bit different, but uh, okay. in Ohio, the lowest B was an 85. Oh, okay. Uh, what's it? We didn't do that 10 point scale in Ohio. So I held her to that 10 point scale. I said, you're living with a- an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, so we have to make sure that you go to school for free. So right. it will be a little harder on you. And it was just me and her, you know, although I have my sons, I went through divorce. So, you know, my mm -hmm. son you know, lived in North Carolina and my daughter was with me because her mom kind of just vanished in the thin air. Mm -hmm. But I was holding her story. But um, so it, my emphasis was on, I have to be mom and dad, but I have to be more dad than mom because you want I didn't want you to be in the same situation that your mom and dad were in when you're struggling and all this stuff. So it's like, okay, if I stay on your butt with these grades, you go to school for free, then ain't no student loans. You don't got to be stressed out. You don't got to worry about nothing. You get this, boom, go through college for free. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I got her in fifth grade. She got nothing less than a B on anything ever um, still to this day. She's never had anything under a B ever. Um, good for you. Good, good for you. her. <laughs> good for her because uh, yeah. like she had a but still yeah, yeah it was it was it was real but I mean I had to man we, we I just never knew you know being an entrepreneur you just never know sometimes right. where the where the money was coming from where you're not gonna be able to afford it then she got mm -hmm. all the student loan debt now you're struggling and, and yeah then it, made, it made it even worse with COVID because now these kids don't have any social skills and they all have depressed too so that would have been a whole nother mm -hmm. a whole nother thing because these kids don't I mean, I feel bad for him. Man. Just think she was in, she was in COVID her senior year of high school, so lost that. And her freshman year in college lost that to COVID. So these kids don't know how to, all they know is this phones. That's all they know is the phone and mm -hmm. being in social environments where you got to talk to people, you got to stand up for yourself, you got to right. talk to the boss, you got to do things socially. They they kind of lacking that. Um, so yeah. You know, and then she was stuck with her dad who ain't know what the heck he was doing. So she was just a right. <laughs> poor child. <laughs> right, just, right. We it, you know what I'm saying? But we got so there. You said, if I remember correctly, you said you got her in fifth grade. So that means you took custody of her when she was in fifth grade? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did, and how did that come about? Like, how did, how did it come for you? Because, and I'm only asking this because people assume that kids are with their mothers right they assume they don't assume that you know when dad picks them up that he's actually the one who is the single parent and it is his home that the child's gonna stay with 24 7 people people still don't see that which is which is bad so um how did that come about that you were able to get custody of her if you don't mind sharing i mean so before i start the story i mean i'm i'm at the situation that the kid should be in the best situation for the kid. Right. So if it's with mom, then it's with mom. Mm -hmm. Like my friends are here from North Carolina. They could have stayed with, they, they were here for COVID because um, we have a, 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 a good relationship as co-parents. My sons were here during COVID. When COVID ended, my son was about to start high school. 
He is a musician. He was born and raised to be a drummer. His mom was the high school band director. That's a decision that, that doesn't take any effort to say that the best decision for my sons was to send them back to North Carolina because he is a band head and his mom is a band director. So he was a right. he was on the drum line as a freshman because right. that's, you know, I can't right. offer them that. So right. now we go back to my, my daughter situation. Some mamas shouldn't have kids like in their possession by themselves, period. I mean, just all jokes aside, and it's just like some dads shouldn't. So I think the court system is now getting to that, that phase. When, when I started out as a parent, it was like, oh, the mama, everybody was like, the mama, the, the, the dad could have been stellar. He could have been the best dad on earth. The mama could have been a whole crackhead. You know what I'm oh. saying? It didn't matter. The mama was going to get the kid back in the day. Now oh. we're starting to get to where the, the kids are going with the, the best decision or the best outlook for the kid. So, yeah, I did a whole lot of fighting and losing. And it, it was a period where, you know, I didn't see my daughter for four years. Mm. Uh, totally four years, like no see, no all, no phone call, no nothing. Didn't know where she was. Didn't know she was alive. Nothing. Child support still whacking me upside my head. Um, mm. And then she came to court. I got her served in the courthouse. I was running from the courthouse to the sheriff to the courthouse upstairs, downstairs, back and forth, get all that stuff. Got her served in the courthouse, and that's how I got my rights back. And then six months later, I get a call from the, the grandparents that was like, "Our daughter can't raise your daughter. Come scoop her up." <laughs> so right. I went and got her with this clothes on her back. In fifth grade, and I brought her back to North Carolina because I drove to South Carolina and I, I had her, you know, as a the parent since. And then her mom vanished for like six and a half years after that. So it was just me and her totally. So I went through about a decade. I mean, really seven full years where her mom was just totally, totally gone. Totally gone. So I did that. That single dad thing where other people are like, I don't get no child support all like I ain't get nothing making no phone calls. I ain't had nobody explain no period. I ain't had nobody at the first orchestra joint. It was just me just trying to figure out how to raise a girl by myself as a, a dude, you know what I mean? Right. And it, but we made, we made it through. It, it is what it is. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, yeah. So I just thought the backstory, you know, because people don't expect that dads have full custody of their of their, of their children, especially their daughters. Um, you know, that's, that's a big deal. Um, I have friends who I have watched go through the process of getting sole custody of their kids or getting custody or getting visitation because the mama's is... is mad because they got a new woman and all that kind of stuff and keep their kids from them you know there's been some reasons because of you know drug addiction with the mom or something like that so um I've seen it I have friends that have gone through the process of trying to get custody of their kids and it is not easy especially because they're a man um and so I definitely understand and can feel the you know um feel what you went through because I've seen it I witnessed it myself I even know someone right now who they're accepting, you know, just seeing their child a couple hours uh, a week and the mom won't let the child spend the night at his house because he's got a woman staying there. And it's crazy. I said, why don't you take her to court? Why don't you fight and get custody? Because you are the better situation. He has a job. She doesn't have a job. She doesn't have a mom. He has his own house. Why don't you go and fight? And he was like, because I don't want to take the chance of not seeing my child when once she gets these papers. I'm like, then you ask for custody and visitation. But I understood it. He didn't want to take the chance of maybe going a year, two, three, four years without seeing his child. Just like you said, you went four well, years without even seeing us. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, you can go through continuous after continuous. So you talk about five, two to five thousand dollars every time you go to the court to sit there all day for them and be like, come back in like two months. <laughs> you know, I went, we went through that too. Yo, that it was, oh. You know, my eyeball hurt. I mean, I need to continue And then I'll be like two months down and $1,500 for the lawyer to come and tell you that y'all got to come back in a couple months. And then, oh, man, I can't drive in the dark. You know, and then boom, they go another 2000 it, it was It's crazy, man. It, it, it's wild, you know, that people still playing that game. But again, now, you know, now judges and courts are starting to say, you know what, we ain't got time for this, you know, because, but but at the end of the day, like, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, my daughter, my daughter is about to be technically a senior in college right now from fifth grade to a senior in college now, and you start getting them conversations like, like the light bulb just go up, bow. Hey dad, I remember, you remember when my mom did this and that, and they start connecting the dots and now you don't have to explain yourself no more. And you, they understand what's really going on. Like, man, she did this and we would, 
you was coming and in it. They they start they understand that, so they respect right. you more, love you more because they start figuring this stuff out when they get a little bit older. And you know that's yeah. all. It, it, it don't feel good when you're going through, but these yeah. kids, kids are kids are. Yeah, dad, dad drove seven hours to come see me for two minutes. You know they they remember right. stuff like that. you know they they remember stuff like that. But right. <laughs> Like, man. <laughs> and I'm experiencing that now with my kids older, you know, their father and I was, it was an abusive relationship. And, you know, I used to not say things, not do things and so forth and so on. Or they asked me, why is daddy cussing at you? And I'm just like, you know, taking the blame for it. Cause I don't want them to, you know, I don't want to give off this impression that their dad is a bad person, but he, he was a bad person to me. Um, so as I gotten older, they're seeing things now and they're just like, now I understand why you didn't want to go to di dinner with us. Or now I see why you didn't want to stay at daddy's house, you know, for a long time. So now they're starting to understand because they're older. Um, so totally get that. Um, applaud you for, for keeping up the fight to get her to make sure that she is with the, 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 the better parent for her. And I like that you said that. So it's not, it's not even about you or the mom. It's really about like, where is, where does this kid, need to be and where they're going to be safe and where they're going to be taken care of and where are they going to have the best possibility of having a great life um and so i wish all courts were like that but they're not not all courts have gotten there but some are getting there um because i've seen it myself as as a social worker they are giving children to fathers if they're the better if they're the better parent i'm not saying better parent as in i don't but you know you, you know what I'm saying. The better parent for the child, like you said. I don't want to keep saying better parents. That's probably not a good word. But the best. What's in the best interest, interest of, the child. of the child? Thank you, Shonda. Thank you. I was having, I was having, I was having problems. Okay. <laughs> I can honestly say when my parents got a divorce and they left it up to us, I was grateful because I didn't want to be forced to go somewhere I didn't want to go. That's and because I, right. And because I am a daddy's girl. Daddy. It was a no-brainer and I knew my mom was going to be with another her her now husband and I was just not with it. I'm like, who is that man? Like it's not happening. So I decided or I elected to stay with my dad. I was the only girl to stay with my dad. The rest went with my mom. And we had two different from that point on, two different worlds even now. Um, I got to see my dad grow up. I got to see him struggle. I got to see him, like he said, he got fired and then he just took off from there as far as his entrepreneurial role. And I was the girl getting out of high school, having to go pack my dad's rags and being on the side of the shows to give him a rag, give him water. Like, that was me. You know, I was that for like six years until I went to college. And then yeah. he got remarried and then they were doing that position. And then this is my yeah. first time seeing my dad. I'm telling you guys, when I left here to go to college, I never looked back. I haven't seen my dad in full form in like seven years. And wow. so- yeah, January of this year is when I first saw this man with legs on his body because we was just camera yeah. uh, for years. So this is my first time seeing him in the flesh. So like legit watching him grow and then me go experience my own life and then come back as a grown woman. When I left Charlotte, I wasn't even old enough to get a cigarette, a black and mild. Like I was young. Right. And then I came back and now I can go to the clubs. I'm 25 and up, so I can go to those spots now. <laughs> it's different. And yeah. to be able to party with him and turn up granted like I said I'm Carmen so I go my way and he go his but right right, it's, just, right. It's, it's a moment so I want to say like it does get it goes it it looks up fellas like I I don't know many um single dads like that uh, my uncle is one his wife passed away to cancer so I do have that dynamic in my life but as far as two living people deciding not to be together and have a child and the father having to take on that I I I, I commend you guys and it does man I, we couldn't be closer like I could cry just thinking about it this man is my everything like he is my lifeline I I tell him every time like if I lose him it's over for it I love my mom to life and she knows it but this one this oh. one yeah, it's over so y'all don't get that love back now. before yes I love that I love that y'all gonna make me cry my dad passed away in 2014 and you know even though we had really really bad times I, I miss him like everything. So please, everybody cherish your, your parents while they're here, especially if you love them and you care about them. You know, some parents, like Dwayne said, shouldn't be parents. Some, some moms, some dads should not be parents. So I get it if you're not close to your parent. But if you have a good parent and y'all have a good relationship and you love and care about your parent, take advantage of the time that you have because I can't hold on to my daddy. 
and I can't kiss on him and I can't go party with him. I can't have a, a shot with him like we used to do when I walked in the house. So in these times that I'm going through what I'm going through with my marriage, like I think that's making me miss him more because I know if he was here, like he would have like pinned my husband up to the wall and been like, yo, you're not going to treat my daughter like this. And this, we need to work this out. I know he would have done that. And if it still didn't work after he did his part as a dad and as my protector, then he would have been like, baby girl, I got you. Like, you know, you got all your love right here. You have all your support right here. And he, I'm going to be real honest. My dad would have been like, fuck that dude. He, that's what he would have said. He would have, because I tried, I know that you tried. And if he still couldn't get no get right, then you're better off. Mm -hmm. That's what he would have said as well. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I miss him. And so cherish that relationship with your dad, because a lot of people don't have their dad, you know, that they actually loved and cared about and wanted to spend time with. So cherish that. And I love that Nuff has you right now, you know, while he's going through his storm. Um, Cause that's going to make it different. Well, y'all have each other because y'all are both going through storms right now. When so, I tell you twinning is not this, like we put a new definition by twinning. Like we both, <laughs> it's ridiculous how our lives are mirroring each other right now, but there's nobody else that I would want to walk me through or be with me in this moment. And it's just all alignment of how our stars got realigned to see each other in the flesh. And we're both walking through the same story. It's so uncanny. It's ridiculous. And I did want to say really quick, I forgot we were live for those who um, I can't even see, but if you <laughs> are watching and you don't have a father figure in what I mentioned and that I have with my dad or a mom that you can speak to, there are villages out there. If you think you're the only person with and you don't have either parents that you talk to, there are so many ways, platforms in which you can get into these communities yeah. and have people yeah. around you that, because it's hard to get your story, to get me to understand your story when I don't know what that's like to not have it. So I get that you can't share things with me or understand why my dad is the first person to know about good, bad news or indifferent. I understand that. So there are places where you don't have to feel alone. I'm getting to a season where I can't blame what I lack on anybody else because this world what it showed me through that pandemic is that there is an outlet and inlet for any and everything I didn't want to do podcasts because I felt like everybody was doing podcasts but can't anybody do a podcast like me and the audience that I'm gonna go get is the ones that they don't even have the message out there they don't have yeah. they're looking for something and I feel like I have it I ain't started a podcast yet but you definitely gave me some inspo with this today but um girl you have it you have it to have a podcast you, you are very outspoken, well-spoken. You got your daddy that there with you. Um, you got something to talk about because I keep hearing she, so that means you are a lesbian, correct? You know what? I'm thinking about that. I'm going <laughs> to change that. <laughs> I'm going to change that. Hold I was about on. to say a lesbian no, no. podcast no, no. about relationships. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was married to a woman. I was um, or am, whatever. But I mean, I was always... Um, I'm, I like energy. If your okay. energy is good, if your vibe, your aura matches with mine, if I can be goofy and wear my multi hats and still That's be Carmen on the side, we go vibe forever in a day. You know, I cook, exactly. I love all the domestic things, but for right. me, we're going to leave that side real quick. And if there's anybody okay. I'm offending personally, I'm okay. a hybrid. I just okay. like to float. Okay. You um, you're a hybrid? I am. <laughs> I am a chameleon. Yes. When it's hot, I change. I'm just kidding. But you no, know, I thank you for saying what you just said, because I'm gonna get back to Shonda in a minute about her alter ego, because you just said what her alter ego is. Go ahead. I know. Go ahead, she was. Go ahead, is that it? It That's was chameleon. 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 Uh-huh. Hey, baby, change like the weather. Right. Right. <laughs> so go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Jessica. We, I didn't want me to cut you off. Pat, were you about to say something? I'm sorry. Oh, me and the ladies keep getting into our thing. Go ahead. <laughs> speaking of ladies i have a question for the ladies when it came down to your selection of people that you chose or they chose you to have kids with and all of that or even as daughters of fathers that transition for you or the transition for the daughters what you think is some good advice for the man as to how far he should go as um like when she started making that transition to dating and uh Have getting into how old are your daughters because you you're yeah, not my, saying stuff like my, <laughs> that kind of stuff 
Mine are nine and ten. All right. So my, my dad is nine and ten. But when it comes to I, I feel like I still should be able to uh make a smooth transition when it comes to vet. And I want them to be able to look at me and get some good date examples. Them. Date still... them now. Yeah. Date them. Yeah. Okay. Take okay. them out on dates and, and show them exactly how going forward. I was about to say that too. Anytime yeah. in life, this is how a man should treat you. Because mm. I'm going to tell you, I love my father, mm. but that man was a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me some of the most horrible advice in my first marriage. And he was like, as long as he cheating and he, she don't, um, <laughs> what did he tell me? He said, as long as he, he's cheating, and she don't, and he don't bring giving no money. Let that man cheat in peace, huh? And that oh, shit stuck with me for <laughs> some years. Amen. But you know, my daddy, he's a. I I got six brothers and sisters. I'm scratching my head on that. Six one. of us. So, um, <laughs> I yeah, years of therapy. I I had to do un, undo what my dad my dad did. So, date her and and show her yeah what she should expect I think for me my biggest thing if and when I become a parent I want to be observant because I don't want to rush certain conversations if that's not where their mind is because for me even being I would say I had rose-colored lenses on my eyes for the very even in my 20s when I tell you I thought the world was just as genuine and green as I was honey (laughs) even my dad at 25 still had to coach me on how my genuinity whatever gets me in trouble because there's people that will take that and abuse it and I didn't know why I'm like daddy well long story short a gentleman took my phone and decided to go through my photos Mm -hmm. and everyone I told that I felt violated because I'm a grown woman I have photos and so I felt violated (laughs) and my dad was like well why would you give him your phone and multiple people asked me that and it I, I just burst out in tears. Like, how was I supposed to know that he was going to take my phone, go through and my go photos? Through Why would I think that? Because I know if I ask to use someone's phone, I'm either sending out a message or storing my number in their worst case, but I'm not going into a space in which you could possibly have private things there, you know? Yeah, and that's, so that's I said, a bit much. <laughs> yeah, I said that to say, observe see what they're watching see what they're looking at see what they're listening to if it is secular if it is relationships if it is there's some intimate segments in there yes their mind is already gearing so then I would start doing the dates then I would start showing them how a chivalrous man acts and so forth and so on but if they have the rose colored lenses on keep them on until you again start to see or hear other things for me I had them on for a very long time and I'm trying to deal with the fact of do I harden up just a little bit but I feel the best parts of Jessica, the things that you guys, this is my first time interacting with y'all. What you're seeing, what you're feeling from me is genuineness. What you're feeling is a heart that has not been yet consumed by people and their bitterness and their greed and their envy. And that is because those rose colored lenses, like I don't look at the world, how they see itself. I look at it, how I view me. I love me and I walk with music in my step. And I just literally every day I wake up, I'm like in a soundtrack, like seriously. So I'm trying to balance between do I allow the world to make me feel tough and don't get rolled over by other people or do I stay to me and just allow things to attract me? I don't know, but back to your point, just observe. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely agree with Shonda and I definitely agree with um, Jessica about dating your daughter. That is something that um, my dad and I, he he wouldn't call a date. He's old school. He, He didn't say that. But he made a point of spending time with me. We would go out together. Um, Even if he's just going to the store, he would take me with him. He took opportunities to spend one-on-one time with me because I'm the youngest of four. So I'm the youngest of four and he has two other girls. So he made a point of spending that that dedicated time with me. He spent dedicated time with my sister. He made sure that we all had our dedicated time. So with you, as you as a father, with, you have three, right? I have three kids with two girls. Yeah, so definitely make time to go out with each of them individually so that they can have that one-on-one time with you. You can open the door for them, you know, pull out their seat for them, you know, start showing them that that's the way they're supposed to be treated. But then you also... Don't be, you're a single dad, you're a good looking dad. Make sure that she sees you in the light that you want her 
to, to see other men. So you can't be hoeing out here and you got all these women coming in and out of your house and they see you being abusive to another woman or mistreating another woman. Don't let her see that either because you can't, you can't give her this example of dating her over here and being chivalrous, but you're over here being a hoe and disrespecting women and being abusive. She, you can't, you can't do that. You have to show her a good man and how a good man treats a woman and you know what you want her to see and what you want her experience to be because you are her first love so don't be the man that now she's going to be attracted to because most women are attracted to men that are like their their own most i'm not going to say all most so if you're a respectful man you're a good man you know you you are always respectful of other women even women that you're dating you're respectful of her by not bringing multiple women in the house if you're showing her the, that kind of man, that positive man, I'm not saying each other to be perfect, but when you're, when you make mistakes, own up to them. You know, if you have to give an apology or whatever, show her the man that, sh- that she deserves to have, that she should have. Cause if you show her that other one, that's who she's going to be attracted to. She's going and to I be just want to say, that abusive man. In the event you do this, like by the T and your daughters do not pan out to be with someone like that for the moment, don't take that on you. When I got with the this woman, okay. my ex, my dad, he wanted to take it personal. He wanted to take it so personal. And I said, you, I love you with everything, but you think too much of yourself. Like this was a choice I made by me for me. And none of my childhood is a reflection of who I decided to say I do to. And granted, they were right. There's a warning before destruction and they gave me the cones. They threw the flags. They was doing everything but coming to get me. And um, that was my choice. Mm -hmm. But um, I said that to say, you know, if they do not pan out, because again, I thought that was going to be forever and it was a moment. Now I got everything that they were trying to say to me because I am one of those, that shit really stank. No, let me smell it. Let me see. Let me see. I am that. I am that. And So whatever they decide to do, it has nothing to do with you. It is not a reflection of you. The reflection of you comes in when they decide to pull their own selves out and you see where they go from there. That is where you will see your residual. That is where you'll see where you came into play. The way I can cover myself and I would pray over myself in that relationship, that was them. That was them. Who I decided to be with and the reason why I had to go through that so hard was me because I'm hard headed like that. But how I kept myself sane, the reason why I didn't have suicidal ideations, that part they can take credit for that. But that's it, you know? Yeah. So, let, let, me, let me jump back into the thing, Pat, because they're they, they, they missing a the part. I've been trying to hold it for a minute, but they're just missing a the part. What you got to say, Dwayne? Let's talk about all that, man. Teach, it, teach the girl how to be the, be the guy and all that stuff. But listen, bro, I did it. It's one part that they missing that they just wouldn't ever say because they're women. You still have to teach your daughter how to be the woman for the man too. That was one part that they just did they just glossed over, like because I you, mean you we just ain't got to it yet. We would have came up with that, right, Shonda? Right, Jessica. Uh, we would have no, got there. Was, they got, they was like, <laughs> you can take a ride and do this. I was like, well, hold we up, man. Got because there. Man, we would have his not that wasn't his question though. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> thank you, Sean. That wasn't his question. Wait four minutes though. Let's 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 go around this, but but for real though, like man, if like that was the best part about being a single dad was that it was like, okay, the world is changing so much to everybody this and 50% this and have and have this and who want to pay all my bills and all that stuff. Hey, man, look, huh? I'm telling my daughter, hey, okay, it's cool. You get your bag and all that. You be an independent woman and all that. But guess what? This is what men like. Is there some of this stuff can you do? Or can, is there stuff that you could that you need to be able to do by yourself? Can you cook? Can you cook? Wait, you wait, 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 w
You, you need to be able to take care of your kids. Like every, everything is about everything ain't about money. Can you can you can you can you do your daughter's hair or y'all gotta go to the shop? What yo, can you can you take care of yourself? Is your is your mental health straight? I that's what I told my daughter first date. Right. We were asking all the real questions, but hey man, first date, I mean, we can we go to the therapist? You know what I'm saying? You want to go to the therapist? So can we go to therapy first? We want to see what's in your brain. Like we want to, we want to give you the real deal. I'm, I'm giving all the men stuff to therapy my daughter. On the first date? <laughs> she, got, she got all kind of she got all kind of uh, gems about being you know what what dudes is looking for what women should do and all that stuff but i'm giving you like the brass tax as a single dad like this is stuff we try to avoid like right now because y'all said something oh, I, if i call my dad if you call, i'm the last line of defense if you call me it's over with <laughs> we go you know, like first 48 if i call you to hit my daughter or something like that ain't no questions you call me as like the red flag 911 burn the house down type stuff. I'm not coming <laughs> asking questions. Oh, how are you and my daughter doing? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not. No. Okay. You call me. Okay. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Like, that sounds like my dad. That sounds like my dad. I'm not asking no questions when we come through. But but seriously, right. though, I mean, I just want to, just like we should teach them how men should treat women. All I was saying is that you need to treat her how we know that men want to be treated too. That, uh, in all seriousness, I mean, because they, they need to know both. And a lot of No, these, that's true. No, you're right. You're very, you're very right. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm just curious as, as to what did you teach your daughters as to what do men like? Because all men don't like the same thing. I was I was going and, to say that too. And I don't think a, I was going whether to a woman can cook is a reflection of whether she could be a good mother to raise your kids because she may be bringing enough money that she hires a chef to, to make your healthy meals every right. day. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just... Like what, what? What are we teaching her about loyalty and respect and how to communicate? Um, so please, if she's uh, hiring a chef to cook meals, I like to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, you can hire whoever you want to. That, that's fine. But to me, to teach her how to be able to do that stuff was more important than hiring somebody. Because again, now we're talking about a whole nother person in your home. And can you trust these people? You, you can't barely trust the daycare people and all that stuff. They touch your kids, they beat your kids and all that. So y'all can have whoever y'all want in y'all house. But I wanted to teach her the fundamental, like that's a lot of stuff they don't teach in school at all because I am a former teacher as well. So no life skills, no no money, no financial literacy, none of that stuff. All that stuff was taught. Uh, just the signs of abuse, um, Cooking, cleaning, sewing, I had to do all that stuff. So I taught her how to do it. So, I mean, a lot of stuff that I taught her was a lot of stuff that women would do anyway that I had to do because I was a man anyway, okay. like normal stuff. And so anyway. As long as you're not making it gender specific, this is fine. Uh, yeah, you, that, that, there's too many gender specific things that I'm, I'm not feeling right there's now. There's a lot of things that you just listed <laughs> off. And I, when I say a lot, I think I mean all of them that my son would need to do as well. Like, Thank you. Uh, that's why I'm getting it. Like, are you that's just the only reason why you were about to get like a war zone started because you're making it gender specific when really if it a man kids, wanting, period. If a man is wanting a woman to cook, clean, and know these things, guess what I'm expecting as that woman? Right. For you to know how to cook, clean, so too. Because exactly. if I'm exactly. making a quilt, where the pillows at? Right. I mean, that's fine. That's the expectation, but that's a, that's a also expectation on the other end. I, don't, I think we're missing that a lot, though. But I, I, I mean, think the issue with us is that you're make you 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 put that with being a wife and being a mother, and wait, wait. It, it should be with being a human, oh, a, a individual, woman, period, or being a person, period. There's certain life skills that everybody should know across the table. Yes. There's cooking, cleaning, paying your bills, budget. You know, those are things that everyone should know, but not not to make you a wife or a girlfriend, lover, mom, whatever. I that. know a few friends right now that are men that I can call, don't know how to do an oil change. My dad taught me that. <laughs> my dad taught me that. Take the air in your tire. Oh, right. so, so like, <laughs> Stuff that I they teach men, saying. they don't teach women. So, so, so let's ask this then. What, so is, I, I guess because we're, we're, we're gender neutral, is, is that a problem if, they, if, you're, if the men doesn't know how to do it? Is yeah. uh, well, uh, it's clearly a problem if if, if she can't cook. Because <laughs> oh, I can cook, right? <laughs> so that, I don't think there's any problems in that. I just think that it those are those are things that I saw that were just missing. So she 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 learned whatever whatever traditional or non traditional roles that men were supposed to have. 
I was in that place. So I had to teach her that anyway. So I was saying from the opposite end. So I think we're taking it as I'm saying that, oh, that's what a woman should be doing and a man should oh, be doing something no. else. That's not what I'm saying. I was saying that what, what she was lacking because, okay, this is what you say a man should know how to do and all that. Okay, that's cool. This is what a woman should know how to do or another person or whoever you wanted to be in the relationship aspect, not men or, men or women. And that's why I was about to say we're tiptoeing on the projects of it being subjective, because if I can bring this to the table, I don't necessarily need you to bring the same thing, too. I mean, why are we doing a two for one? Bring your own set and let me see how that compare and contrast and how we can build based off of your skills and the skills that I have. So I knew we were about to get in that realm of this is all subjective. This is completely on what you can bring and what I can do to add to it. But if we are speaking in a generic sense, uh, I expect you to do what I can do, if not better. I expect you to be more experienced at it, especially if you feel it's something you should dominate or a realm that you right. should, you thrive in. Especially, yeah. I need you to be able to go to a car dealership and say, nah, we're going to do it like this because I know y'all got this on the back stock. And I know you, that's the kind of talk I need you to be able to do. When we go to dinner and something ain't right with your food, I got you. I got mm -hmm. that part. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? A give and take. So if you are going to teach your daughters or your son one way in which they should be or one way in which they should thrive or one skill set in which they should have down packed to the hammer, make sure it's something that is truly not only beneficial for self, but able to be conducive when they are going to be with someone else. I think there's a, I met somebody who felt like they could just do it all. They, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that. But on the inside, that's where they, and that's another part too. Don't get so caught up in the surface things, the things that you can actually physically contribute. Because if that mental, as you know, if that's tweaking, no, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a wrap. Who cares if you can make me a souffle? You pray. Are you crazy? So, I have a question, Dwayne. So this is totally get off the subject, but we're here. We're here. We're here. We do it all the time. So, okay. So when you go out on a date with a woman that you're interested in, like you want to, you see there's, it's more than sexual. So you like this woman, like you, you really feeling her, right? Mm -hmm. And you ask her, can she, can she cook? Can she, you know, does she keep her house clean? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. What if she says, I don't cook. I'm a horrible cook. Or what if she says, you know, my house is in order, you know, the way I like it and what's comfortable for me. Like, are you not going to date a woman that you like, like you are interested in because she can't cook or she can't do some of those things? No, because those are things that I enjoy. It would be nice. It would be nice to share some of those responsibilities. Like you went, I wouldn't want to cook every day, even though I enjoy cooking. Like that's my retirement job. <laughs> but it would be nice. Okay. But that would be something that I'm asking for for knowledge. So no, if you yeah. don't cook, then I'm gonna be doing the majority of cooking because I want to. I want to try to be as healthy as possible. I don't, like I said, I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten McDonald's in like six, seven years. I haven't eaten pork in like six or seven years. I I want. I want us to to get past that. You know that that unhealthy lifestyle that a lot of people of color have had. Mm -hmm. So Did you eat meat. I'm at. Uh, sometimes not as much i'm more pescatarian <laughs> you, Everyone dairy? So, not really so can i say that should we have that conversation <laughs> obviously not in this podcast but should we have that conversation of the difference between settling and setting boundaries yes you, you based off of that the monologue you gave i thought you were going to answer that question completely different i did, I did too. Not, <laughs> yeah, but obviously not a boundary for you that's something that you're willing to negotiate i like that that's flexible uh, I've, been, <laughs> I've been married i've been divorced i've been in relationships out of relationships i'm getting older you know so understanding you um is the most important thing so yeah i'm having conversations with my daughter about hey man you need to understand you you need to be yeah. in a position Oh, you in therapy? What your therapist say today, homie? Like, what's what's going on? We haven't talked, and 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 they come a little bit stronger because I am a guy. It's it's not as it's not as fluffy sometimes because I'm a guy. Because I'm like, I cut all that fluff out. Yo, what's what's popping? Like, why right. are we talking about this again? Because yo, it wasn't that it wasn't that balance of softness. It was just like I was just a dude. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I'm older. She younger. She a female. I'm a dude. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. We we hit that team. <laughs> We got teenage years where we were just missing each other because I'm an old dude, she a young girl. We just wasn't, we, yeah. we, wasn't, we wasn't seeing eye to eye anymore, but we got through it. But yeah, it the mental part, you know, I, I know I laugh and giggle talk about cooking and all that stuff. And I mean, I just like eating. So of course, cooking is going to be on my top thing. So maybe I, I'm sorry for offending 
but I like but it. No, I like it because you actually know how to cook from what it sounds like. I've never had right. somebody like I've, 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 had I've never dated that. anybody that doesn't know how to cook. Like that's a thing for me. That's a turn on for me. So yeah. whether you're male or female, if you can cook, then like you already are, you know, piquing my interest because you can cook. My dad was a cook. My dad cooked for my mom every single day unless she initiated cooking. And so I grew up in a house with a man that cooked all the time. So like that is something that I love in my mate or partner or whatever. This this was another this was another dad lesson. It was like you can't you can't expect something out of somebody else that you're not willing to give or do yourself. So you expecting me to cook every day because I can cook. Because so now you're taking it for granted. Like, can 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 you be some reciprocation? So at least know how to do it. Because guess what? If you if I if my daughter met somebody like me who cooked all the time, right, and she doesn't know how to cook, it might not be a problem. But how awesome would that be if he had a long day and came home and you had that 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 veggie burger queen? <laughs> I, had that baby I honestly table. thought that was something that wasn't a, I thought that was something I could work around, but it wasn't even the fact that I had to cook every day. It was the expectation that I was going to cook every day that got There's me. a difference. There's a difference. They work the same shifts. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay? By the sweat of the brow, is there something like that in scripture? Like, I was working, like, you know what I'm saying? Hard work, okay? Like, come on. Where is my steak and mash? Like, what is going on? Okay, so enough said. I see you sitting there. I need you to come in this conversation. I need you to come. I need you to come in this conversation. What did you teach? What was some of the main things that you taught your daughters? Because you got a pretty awesome daughter sitting right here. And I'm, like, blown away in love with her right now okay so what are some things that you instilled in your daughters because pat was asking you know what what can i do as a father to girls you know what can i do so what are some of the your the tips that you obviously instill in your girls when it came to being a woman and the men in her life i don't know i just i don't really have one one particular thing that i can say to that i just really talk I just, I was, I was more, more of an like example. I wanted to be the example. So I think that girls look for um, their fathers and men. Yes. So, you yep. know, that's, that's how it goes now, you know? So I wanted, I'm like I said, I'm not an abusive person. I'm not a violent person. I'm a measure twice, think, uh, measure twice, cut once type person. So, mm. you know, in that regard, um, that's 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 really I, I always let my kids, you know, make their own decisions and whether they chose to be with a man or they chose to be with a woman, regardless, you know, whatever it is, I want them. That's that's these are decisions you make you live with. But be with somebody that loves you and understand that love is a verb. Um, also understand that love doesn't hurt people. People hurt people. So I was always more so from that point and the spiritual aspect of things uh, as opposed to you need to do this for your man. You need to do this for your woman. I never really came on up to my kids like that. I think um, as as parents in our household, when uh, I was with with their mom, which we were married for sixteen years, and um, I think in that time frame, we we were those examples. Like we have fun. Um, we always have family. You no, know, still to this day, we're not together anymore. But like I said, when we get together, it's still family. I love her husband. I think he's a great guy. I tell him all the time, "You're the greatest replacement." ever you know <laughs> like yeah. really so yeah so um I like, I like that yeah so i just think that uh, I, I i that's just that's just what it is i'm i don't know i don't i didn't give them any particular tools or anything you know i i taught you them did. based on you them particular what I, feel. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I was just trying to be an example i am yeah. i'm the tool i'm, I'm be the, the example yeah, yeah yeah um pat so for you, you have two girls. Are they the oldest or are they? Yeah. What's the order? The it's two older. oldest. Okay. Yes. So what are some things as a as a girl dad that are working for you? Like, you know, I'm doing this right when it comes to my girls. Same question for Dwayne. What, what did you do right or what are you doing right that you know you're doing right? What I think I'm doing right even now is... Um, showing them how to be responsible for your actions. That's big for me. Like no matter what decisions you make and no matter how you see 
me and your mother, because I got two different mothers with my daughters, right? So it's like the mothers respond to me differently. And sometimes the daughters respond to how their mothers respond to me. Like, mm -hmm. I have to show them something different. You know, I've had moments with one mother where it's like it, conversations got rough. I hate doing stuff in front of the kids. Like I always was biting my tongue a lot until I, I if I did step out of line verbally with the with the mother, I still will go talk to my daughter one on one or I talk mm -hmm. to my if it's if if both of them witness me getting outside of my norm because mm -hmm. I want some character because it's in my character to have mm -hmm. an aggression towards certain mm -hmm. situations I can't be treated and I can't be talked to certain type of ways until I get to a point where it's like I'm dealing with that. I can tell them, hey, look, I just can't let anybody talk to me like this or or do me like this. I say, and that go across the board, like you can't just let people treat you any kind of way. Right. You have to have to stand firm on. You know, right. I believe I'm trying to deal with that because I see it even in school with them sometimes. You know, um, I've seen I've seen them make decisions that I wouldn't make when it comes to interacting with a boy. You know, some boys, they'll, they'll pick on you because they like you. Mm -hmm. but then, like, <laughs> now they get into a little physical conversation and I'm like, okay, how did you handle this, et cetera, et cetera. Or what were you thinking before that? Because I want them, I want to know what made them react, how they reacted, and then be able to talk it out. But I think I've been doing good by talking with them and trying to show, be responsible for your actions and just know that everything you do yes. eh, has some consequences behind it. And you 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 stand, stand by it because at the end of the day, I can only take you so far. Your mom can only take you so far. And I never, I never talk bad like about your moms like that. Like even if we got into it or something, like, I, I'm like still like, yo, it's your mom, you good. You always listen to her, don't lie to her. Hey. She's good. She's a good mother. Mm -hmm. so you just you might see we might be at odds. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to reassure them that, you know, things can, things can get better, too. You know, yeah. all. And how old are your daughters, Pat? It's nine and ten, but they, they care a lot. You know, they, they see things that you really don't think until they ask you that question one day. Like That's all the kids. That's all, that's all kids. They, they're yeah. watching and they're seeing even when you don't think they are. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I just did the math just that fast. <laughs> now, I don't, I'm asking you this because I want to know how you're going to tackle that question if it becomes a question. How are you going to answer that if one of them decide, hey, I know how this works. Something in the pudding, you know what I mean? How are you going, are you ready for that whenever they ask? Because kids are inquisitive and it may come faster than you think. So I just want to know if that's something you've, planned and thought about since you are already asking those questions about dating, you know, because if they get with somebody who's, a, you know, had an infidelis or something like that, obviously you would be the first encounter they have in that explanation. So how would you go about that? I don't know if it was an infidelity though. You could have just, you know, slipped up. <laughs> how are you, are you ready for those tough conversations? Is that what you're asking, Jessica? Yeah. You got, yeah he's, you're asking how how is kids so close in age? That's what you're saying. That's what she's really asking, but she was asking in the polite way. Because I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, man, what are we doing here? Like, I just want to make sure I was on the same page. Like, okay. This, that, I uh, just met him. I didn't want to go all the way in. I was trying to, you know, man, play I'm, like, oh, I'm I'm daddy daughter and you right now, man. We man, man. We, what it is, you know what I'm saying? Where was that time I wasn't I wasn't gonna say I wasn't gonna oh I'm definitely ready. I'm ready for that. I, I feel like I'm definitely ready for it because I know that um, I know that my daughters they're they're with their mothers most of the time. So guess who they're getting to know most of the time. So whenever they come to the point where it's like I can say, well, you they know how she is, or I can tell them how it was for me because I know how I moved. You know, I didn't have time. It was a phase in my life. I didn't have time to stop. And slow down. Hey, I'm I'm ready to move because oh, you want to argue? Oh no, I'm out. I'm out. Bye. Mm -hmm. It is. What it is. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, yo, I still wanted to stand fast and you know be responsible for my actions. It's like, yo, I and I and, and that kind of spills over into a uh, spiritual realm because you ever heard heard people say you got to be specific when you ask for certain things, mm -hmm. you know? 
I wasn't as specific as I thought, you know, because I did ask for a family, you, you know. And you gotta I, I got to be real specific about right. what you want. <laughs> Tell them what you want and don't leave out no details. Right. Even so, down to the height, sometimes you got to be specific. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot, a lot of that stuff kind of, kind of, um, is kind of what I'm sitting, sitting stage for when I have to a answer questions like that because I can tell them like, hey, you really need to get to know what you want, you know. At least, I mean, I, I, I've learned over the last five to seven years a lot of stuff that I wanted off just me dating and learning, like, yeah, stuff I don't like or do like, but I had to get there and kind of feel out some things. I can't just sit up and write down a list sometimes, you know, people mm -hmm. talk, but then I feel like it changes as you change and grow too. That's oh, just, for sure. My yeah. list, like I told y'all, or I didn't speak on really, I didn't have boundaries when I got into my marriage. And I know you're like, huh, why not? I really didn't. I didn't think that I explicitly had to tell somebody I don't like being beaten. I didn't think I explicitly had to tell somebody I don't like being talked to or called out of my name. These were not things that I thought were illicit that you had to tell a person, hey, when we start dating and ever, if you ever feel triggered, if you ever feel disrespected, if you ever feel small, you can talk to me. You don't have to berate me. You don't have to, I didn't know I had to be specific. So my list of boundaries, my list of needs, wants, desires, things I can't have, things I can't tolerate are long now. They've elongated because this was my first real relationship. Being domestic is deep. Nobody told you like that roommate living in situation ain't gonna never be me again. But I'm gonna tell you, it comes with some things. And if you don't know yourself prior to, baby, get ready to pull out a book with no um, no written pages because you're gonna fill it up by the time you go. And my mom and dad kept calling me. They're like, when are you gonna leave? When are you gonna leave? And I'm like, mom, when I've had enough. I said, if I leave right now, I'll be back. I said, if I leave right now, I will be back, not in this relationship, but in one worse, one where you are not posting my photos. You and are now seeing- yeah. yeah, that's another thing that as as fathers, I think is important for them to teach your daughters is self worth. So you don't let your 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 you 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 let your you tell your daughters that they're beautiful. You compliment mm -hmm. them, you know, on because my daughter has a different style of dress. So does my son. Mm -hmm. Like they yeah. they 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 have their own individual styles and personalities, and I encourage that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, your your daughter might turn into a goth, but if she's a yeah. beautiful goth and she's clean and her hygiene is great, she's taking care of herself and that's where she is 100%, like that's who she is, let her be that person. Let her be great. So but like I said, if they don't pan out to be, because my dad showered me with love, adoration, took me on dates and everything, and I still settled for what I was in. But that, again, had nothing to do with my upbringing. None of it. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Well, my dad was sitting here and he couldn't recall what he gave us. My dad gave us the relentless ability to love. Even after my dad stayed in that marriage, getting cheated on by my mom way longer than we ever knew about. You get me? So I stayed there because I thought love was enough. I saw my dad give out love. When my dad and I decided to stay, to, um, when I decided to go with him in the divorce and my dad decided to quit his job, like he didn't have a daughter in high school who wanted to <laughs> get married and stuff. Like, come on, like, you know, he thought love would pay the bills and that's literally I grew up with the rose colored lenses thinking love will take care of that no love got you <laughs> love that is how I grew that's up not a bad you know I mean? that's not a it's bad. not it's not bad. <laughs> but it is when you have to still learn when love what love got to do with it love isn't enough and love is not it enough isn't. it isn't and I didn't know that I had to give up time of my life to figure that part out but I'm glad I did it because going forward I know how much love that I can give you for giving me little less than the bare minimum. I can give you amps of it. You will <laughs> feel it in your sleep. You'll wake up. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. I was pumping this out, face still bleeding. You want breakfast? Couldn't even see out my right eye, you guys. I love, that's all I could give. So I'm just saying when you are teaching your children, when you are raising them up, whether you get a new or not, and back to you, Pat, really quickly, the reason why I asked you that question wasn't to get into your business. When my dad decided to tell me why they got a divorce, I resented my mom for years. I resented her for years. I thought she was a trollop. I thought, how could you? All these kids you got were beautiful, were great, were doing good in school. I could cry right now thinking about it because what did we do? Why? Were we not enough? Like, what was it? And then when I got older and I was like, let me hear your side. Cause I couldn't hear it at the time. I couldn't take both. I just took his and that was it. And I blocked her out. 
And then when I got older and I started dealing with my own kind of guys, I was like, okay, she couldn't be crazy. Let me go see what she was talking about. Cause I'm going to cheat too, because he is horrible. So I talked to her and it was just a matter of your dad was dadding for y'all, but he was not husbanding for me. And I didn't know what that meant. It's like, girl, you selfish. Who wants you after five kids anyway? But then I like, ladies, don't give up. But anyway, I was very confused. I was lost. But Pat, when your daughter comes into, if she resents you or goes through that phase or whatever, when she actually realized, or, you know, if that happens, full circle, it comes around. Why? Because she's going to live her own little life. I don't need no daddy. Like he, he, <laughs> when I tell you it all comes back to full circle, they are going to well, run into your arms of understanding. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Pat, I just say definitely um, instill that self-worth, that self-respect that she knows that she's beautiful, that she can do whatever that she sets her heart on. That's something I think is really powerful, especially from dads. Um, because we, you, again, you're our first love. So we want you to love us. We want you to, 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 you know, you know, gush about us. We want you to be like, we want to be your center of attention. You know, we want to be that girl to you. So if you let her know that she is, she is beautiful to you, that you do love her, that she is cherished, that's da, 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 da. those are the kind of things that she needs to feel from you. She really needs to feel that from you. I hear from so many girls who go out here, they're having sex, they're promiscuous, and they got a baby at 16, da, da. my dad didn't love me, or he never spent no time with me, mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. So you have to realize that what you don't give her, she's going to go out. She will go out and find it, um, whether it's positive or negative. Hopefully it's positive, but it's whatever she does not get. If she feels like you're neglecting her in any way, those are the kind of things she's going to be out here looking for. And you don't want her to feel neglectful of your love and your, you know, your attention and all that good stuff. Um, we Something are my I'm just going to mention this one thing and then we can mm -hmm. go because I am so at work. I'm tired. Um, <laughs> On Valentine's Day, my dad would come and go to the dollar store. I didn't know they were dollar store at the time, but it was cheap. <laughs> but nonetheless, with maybe $5 on the three girls and go and just get little things and bring balloons. And we would get a call down to the office like, what? I am not a bad student. Was I would go down there and tears would fill my eyes. And mind you, I didn't even know what feeling I was feeling. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what that was, but I cried and I would just jump on him and be like, oh my God, you thought of me on Valentine's Day. Like, what? Yes. And he did it consistently every year, just Valentine's Day, he would drop off at my school and me and my sister were in different grades at the time. And he would just make his way. I got to go see a sister next. And when yeah. I tell y'all, you feel so special getting on that bus, being the only daughter, or the only person <laughs> to have somebody. My dad got y'all you just get something and I don't know if that's something y'all are doing or have do that that right there I remember that and that was years ago still Shake Creek it. Elementary show, yeah. her. show her the love show her the love <laughs> it's okay to give that tough love it's okay to give that macho ism all that. that is okay it's okay for her to see that but shower her with love like take her out on dates like Shonda was saying you know, let her know that she's beautiful. Do do have little tea parties with her. Do their nails. Let them do your nails. It doesn't make you gay if she does your nails. Um, said, I ain't going for that right now. I ain't even going with you. I ain't gonna go with you. <laughs> y'all get dressed up. You know, y'all get dressed up. Go out. Y'all father daughter dance. Make sure that you're there every year. You know, just, just let her know that she's an awesome kid and that you love her. Um, takeaways, because we have gone over a couple of minutes we're actually doing good we're usually like over 20 minutes but we're doing really good we're only over nine minutes so <laughs> Dwayne your takeaway as a girl dad what would you tell because we have some fathers watching because I'm looking at the comments and the hearts and da, 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 da. so what would you tell another girl dad he's about to have his baby girl she's on her way oh god man <laughs> after them kids no let me quit uh, <laughs> uh, um, she's already I mean, on the way you can't tell him not to have her <laughs> yeah, put it back up in there you know what i'm saying but uh, <laughs> um i don't know man it, it it was such a journey for me because i've always wanted to have kids when i was 16 17 18 i was like i want to grow up you know it was like i want to have the white picket fence the, 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 the cat you know what i'm saying the, the, the boy and the girl and i'm good and, and it, it it worked out differently so you know what what i want to do what I've always tried to do with my daughter is try to help her be in a position that was better than what I was in. 
Oh, so I'm going to try to teach her everything that I, I like. I think men like, I think women like, I think I'm trying to teach you every possible thing to keep you as mo as well-rounded as possible. But right now, you know, being, she'll, she'll be 21 in a couple months. It's like, Hey man, what, what, what you got going on? You know, like what, what's really good. You know what I'm saying? But do you know you, you know, right. and then, then it's COVID face. Like, do you know you like, can you be by your, and that, that was something that we have this, this a whole family of like, like, like baby girl said, we got a whole family of lovers, like a whole family of just good hearted, give you the shirt off their back, man, love you to the wheels fall off that thing. And everybody ain't like that. Everybody don't have family like that. Everybody don't treat you like that. So it's like, baby girl, you gotta, I'm, I'm, 40, I'm 45 years old and just, just starting to learn. I just started to learn that at the end of 44, like, hey man, you gotta, you gotta know how to be happy. So. Just within you, like if you happy within you, then don't nothing else matter. So to anybody that add to that joint is this this gravy. So the best part about being a single dad, like a full endurance every day single dad, where she got to see all the good and witness all the bad. The car troubles. I ain't got no money. We'll be we gonna eat, but that's what they now. They, now that's one thing I can. It ain't never been no lights off. It ain't never been no missed meal. I would have, I would have went down there some blood, plasma, your soul, something, pawn, something. We go, they gonna eat. They're not, they're not gonna know that it's a struggle. They might see me, and I didn't hide that either. You know, I'm not hiding all that, all that emotional stuff because then you, you just raising more broken people. So if yes. I was having a bad day, I agree. They knew that. it. They knew it. Mm -hmm. and, and they ain't feeling it today. You know what I'm saying? I mean, squirt one or whatever like that. All this man up stuff. No, I'm, I'm not with all that. I'm not, I'm not fronting. I'm not fronting for them, I'm not fronting for nobody I love. If I got to go out in public and be celebrity photographer, then I might be straight, but I'm not fronting for my kids. They, they know how I feel because I want them to be able to articulate how they feel to their loved ones, to their husbands, to their wives. They, they need to know how to speak what's going on because I'm extra nice and I'm extra caring and I just wouldn't say nothing. I get ran over or I'll be, like you said, I'll be going back and forth and stuff like this is a train wreck, but Man, my good heart says, man, they'll change. They'll, they'll do better the next time. They'll, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling them what I want. They'll do better. Nah, nah, they won't do better. <laughs> they won't. So be happy with the you. It won't be so hard to leave. I'm so thankful, like you said, and, and I'm not tooting my own horn because I don't have a horn to toot. But <laughs> I raised I raised a daughter that she did her, she had a four, she, she about to be 21. Her first boyfriend started at 19 years old. That's the first boyfriend she ever had. First relationship she ever had. It wasn't with a buster. She met a dude that was cool, nice, funny, caring, open the door, all that stuff. So, so you see your dad try to teach you and tell you how to do it. And then your first relationship, the first experience you got with a with a mother man was, you know, basically back at the time. Of so if, even if it doesn't work, you know how to be treated, which means you know when it's time to step away. <laughs> It's time to roll. You know what you should expect from a man, or what you what you shouldn't take from any other person. Like you know that. So she 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 has that example. And I was like so thankful. I was like, dang, I'm glad she ain't college me. <laughs> she, met, she met a grown me. She didn't meet a college me. She didn't meet the frat boy me. She met a real nice dude, and I, that, that was good. cool. All right, that was good. cool because your first experience with a with a with a boyfriend situation that that could have you all backwards and hard beat up forever. It and can. Like I said, I'm all for therapy, so I'm all for this. I mean, it's trying to be better. But again, if you're a good person, you know, you you really got to really, really, I, I don't even know what the words right there to say is, you got to really, really be mindful of just how how not like everybody else people are. <laughs> like, you're not like everybody else, and everybody else ain't like you. Everybody else, like, people laugh and go, oh, you talk to your sister every day? Oh, I, there, there is nobody on either side of my family that I don't get along with. Nobody. I can't name nobody. Oh, I don't like my cousin, my, my grandpa. No. I love everybody. Everybody love me. Like, our family is closed. So she she understands that. So, she, But I'm like, baby girl, everybody not like that. Right. That's everybody, true. Everybody, everybody don't talk to they, they dead every day. Everybody don't, 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 don't. They family ain't all together at family reunions and getting together and having fun all day. Everybody not like that. So don't be discouraged. Just know that that's how you love. You just have to Make sure that you understand that everybody's not like that. So if if, if that ain't the situation that you're willing to to endure, then don't you know like don't. So yeah, yeah that's that's my topic for dads out there.
good advice, good suggestion. And I was going to say that anyway, because you're a man as this is your, your viewpoint as a father, which I can never be and never will be. So I really, I appreciated all of that. I really did. Um, Pat, your, your takeaway, single man, he's watching about to have a daughter. What you, what you going to tell him? What you going to tell him about being a girl dad? If you're not married and not thinking about it, think about it. And I say that because it's like, it's a different dynamic a man to take on whenever you talk about, as far as responsibilities, like I said earlier. Um, I, because I tell my daughters to look for that first before even getting into the, let's just have sex, have a baby. No. Nah. So look you already have. I think I missed it. Look for what? What did you, what do you, what do you tell her before? I, I, for, for him. All right, uh -huh. So I'm one of the guys that believe that we choose, all right, as far as having a mate, as far as wife. All right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if he hasn't already thought about it and he's about to have, think about it. Definitely yeah. make it. Because I do believe that we find more. And I haven't been married. Okay, don't get me wrong. But just listen to other guys and, and um taking notes prior to getting married. I'm like, okay, it's one of those things that's really going to bring out the man in you because you're going to be responsible for a lot of people in the way, you know, mm -hmm. you, you really get to see what you're made of and, and you get to throw a lot of frivolous stuff to the side, especially if you're young, like, come on, you're going to really stop hanging out like you was like, yo, okay, I got a whole life out here. And, and okay. I'm, and, and for example, I mean, I tell this guy, look, mm -hmm. I'm 44. I started what people would say late, but that was on purpose. I didn't want to bring any kids into the world like that, mm -hmm. you know? So the fact that they're here now, I really, I really try to do things that's conducive with having, letting them have the best life, even though I'm not with the mothers, but I, I really wish they could have that balance. You know, but I didn't have it in me at the time to really lock down mentally and align myself all the way around to say, hey, let me go ahead and make this make this right and make it work. I mean, I have my mother and father coming up, so I know how I can look. I watch them separate. I watch them come back together. It can work. Mm -hmm. So that's think about it. You know? Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I, I don't, and we were talking about this on my, my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, probably the last couple of days, comments have been coming in. It's why I was saying, why do, why do, why do people cheat? Like, why, what is the point of cheating? You just say that you're unhappy or you just say that you want to be with someone else, or you just say, you know, marriage is not for me. So the state of marriages these days is not good. <laughs> So to, to, for me to hear that you, that you still believe in marriage and the benefits of marriage and the state of marriage and what it should stand for, for a man is refreshing because I, me and several other women on this thread have said, we're kind of losing faith in marriage <laughs> because of the problems that we have gone through in our marriages. And just, unfortunately it's, you know, the, 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 the level of respect for marriage is just is not what it should be anymore so I really appreciate you saying that you know that if you aren't married think about it um because that lets me know that you value marriage where a lot of times a lot of people don't value marriage anymore marriage is not the same anymore people go into it for the wrong reasons and and they end it for the stupidest reasons <laughs> stupidest reason and some very serious reasons. They, they just don't like that you uh, gain 20 pounds or they don't like that you can't cook. Messing with, you, with Dwayne, just messing with him. <laughs> um, you know, y'all want a vacation in different places, petty stuff, but then there are relationships that should end because they need to end because they're abusive. It's not a good, it's not a good fit. Y'all don't respect each other. You're cheating on each other, so forth and so on. There are reasons for, for marriages to end, but I know a lot of Americans that have ended for petty stuff and they have, you know, so um, thank you so that. much. We could talk about the boundaries of marriage in another podcast as well, because when you're younger in the marriage, you think you can still club and stuff because that's, you're still in the age demographic where it's acceptable. When you're married, trying to club with your partner is a recipe for disaster amongst other things. I having don't fun. agree. 
I don't agree with that, but go ahead. Well, no, I think that that is obviously a whole other segment. We are definitely yeah, obviously we're gonna get that. <laughs> Because, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I feel like if we're both in the same place mentally, I can see how it's not a dangerous thing, but if you're both two alpha people, knowing when you walk into a place, you exude the attention or the energy almost immediately, all eyes are on you. If you're both knowing of that kind of power that you hold, going to a club, especially if, yeah, no, I don't even see it in a way in which it's healthy. Okay. It's it's to each it's so, I, within the relationship. I've never had those problems. I've I I've dated men, I've been married, we go out and party together, we go clubbing, we do this. It's never been an issue for our marriage ever. It's never been that we go clubbing or you know, bar hopping or whatever together has never ever been an issue in any of my relationships. Um, so th- that's why I'm saying I don't agree, but that's my experience. You've had a different experience and I respect that and that's all good. Now I'm frustrated because that's literally, it was like a boundary that I was not getting up on. I was not letting up on that. If we're in a marriage, we ain't going to the club, Barnes and Noble. And I'm not saying it's gotta be boring, but I think we should party separately. I don't think you should see what I do when I'm turning, not saying I'm gonna be disrespectful, but yeah. I'm going to a club. What do you think happens at a club? There's no seance circles. So, I mean, at the end of the day. I mean, um, <laughs> uh, I've had the best it's time. Seen a lot with... of things happen in the clubs. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But how can you partake in those festivity festivities and your partner is over the like? How can y'all do that in the same space? I, if you can't party with your mate, then that's I don't I don't understand how you you can party together. But every weekend, me and you are going to the same spot. Absolutely not. Get not your every friend. Weekend, but y'all should be able to go out and party together at a club or be able to party at uh any anything. Y'all should be able to party together. And that okay, was my okay. issue because my mate, wife is not my friend. friend. You're not my friend. friend. You are my wife or my husband. We're not friends. I mean, yes, we respect each other like friends, but we are not going to be outside token and all. No, you won't go with your group of people and I'm going to go with mine. Are you nuts? You should be friends. We we are in a marriage. I want to be looking at my me and everything. I want to show off, show out. I want you to, I want to be outside with you like. You can pretend like you ain't coming with me. You could you could be over there and I could be over there like, oh, I could come holla at you. We could put role play. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. I, I love role playing with my partner. Like, yeah. It was, it was not so happy for me. Bring you they drinks. were very much insecure and small-minded. So it was very hard for me to do that. I told y'all I like to be Carmen on the weekends. Like I love it. I love tapping into a different feature. It's sexy. But at the same time, when you have people who get insecure a little bit. Now they start doing things to test you. Now they're over in a woman's face. Well, see, that's that's not that's not about the club. That's about being that's in the unhealthy. That's that right. right. It has that's nothing good. to do with the club or the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're mis- you're thinking we're in. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like we can't be friends. Go with your friends and parlay. Like you don't have to come Honey, with me. You can go in Barnes and Nobles and be fly and somebody hit on you. Right. It doesn't matter. Well, who's telling? Uh, girl, my so hands ain't is, made. Who do you mean? Right. Me? So that means that was your partner was toxic, and I'm glad you got out of that. No, because yeah. if you was if you was. Carmen on the weekend, I would have been San Diego. We would have been that day live. Yes. Don't shine and San Diego Santiago, whatever your name was. We, he got that's his alter ego, uh Shonda. We the Santiago. We gotta remember that. <laughs> All right, y'all. We have gone over and now we about to talk about do you party with your mate or not? So we, we that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> so thank y'all. Thank you for coming on. Um, thank you, Dwayne and Pat, sharing your experiences as single dads raising girls. I'm on. I'm not even gonna let the ladies comment on this because it's not even about us moms tonight. It's about the fathers tonight. So, fathers, thank you so much for um, sharing your experiences with us, sharing you what you feel you're doing right, even being transparent and saying, you know, I might not be doing this the right way. Which what can y'all do to help me out here? So, I really appreciate y'all joining us and make sure that you follow everybody on social media very quickly. Dwayne, social media. Uh, Antoine Dwayne Jones, A N C O I N N E D U A N E Jones on every social media platform. That's it. Boom. Pat, tell everybody how to how to find you. PM Styles. That is P dot M dot Styles. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Shonda, tell everybody how to find you. 
had his face the bottom the second. You have <laughs> girl. <laughs> I think I think oh well on Instagram it is Queens Rising, but on it Facebook is. it is Kashonda Thorpe. So yes, ma'am. I was about to say if I need to look it up for you, yes, you got that. Okay. Um <laughs> okay. uh enough said, where he at? he had to go to a business meeting you are the second okay. person that he hung up on i mean he's the second person that he hung that's up okay on. that's okay I, I know he's busy i'm that's okay so um tell us your father's social media and then tell us mm-hmm. his handle is at n-u-f-f-c-e-d that is on every single platform that you can mention he keeps it very simple so n-u-f-f-c-e-d <laughs> Me. my instagram handle is the only one i'm giving out tonight because my facebook is my government name and it's just <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just uh, my Instagram is J E S S I E two and the number X. Say it two times, just as nice. Jesse two X. Thank you. I found you. Got it. Got it. Oh, look at that pretty profile picture. Okay, please. Please. Okay. please. That's me trying to get my Stella on. You see that? <laughs> oh, I look different. I'm telling you, Carmen at on the weekend. I'm telling I, you, I see oh. Carmen. I see Carmen. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for being on tonight. I appreciate you. I love you. And everyone have a good night. Peace. Good night.